Hello, I'm Steve Forrest and this is a general overview of the activities so far in Grand Challenge 2.2 which is titled Manufacturing High Performance Coils with Ultimate Control. So far this work theme has focused around hollow conductors for high power density machine windings with the idea being to replace the more traditional stranded coil uh, where a, a series of strands would form a bundle which is then wound into the, the number of turns required uh, for that particular coil. Um, the hollow conductor offers direct liquid cooling of the conductors uh, and this could remove the requirement for water jackets or fluid containment sleeves within the electrical machine stator. So by that I mean uh, a sleeve put in to within the stator bore to create a, a dry area for the rotor if you like and a wet area um, within the stator so that a coolant can be passed over the coils um, for thermal management. Um, obviously putting in that sleeve creates a larger air gap and reduces the performance of the machine. So the hollow conductor also allows us to put in a, ro a more robust interconductor insulation and insulation between the conductor and the stator. Uh, in this case we don't require a thermal path from the coil to the, the stator and beyond to remove the the heat from the coil, the heat is removed directly from the centre of the coil in this case and we in fact assume that uh, the majority of the heat is in fact removed from the fluid in the middle of the coil and there is little conduction between strands or between hollow conductor sections. Uh, and the, it is anticipated that the use of hollow conductors could improve the power density of equivalent machine uh, enabling us to drive up the current density in the windings through uh, the improved heat transfer. So in order to assess the suitability of the hollow conductors we've been establishing a framework to identify candidate applications with a significant dividend using hollow conductors. Uh, so they, these, this framework has largely included um, a set of modelling tools to date. Um, the first one being a th modular thermal 3D thermal model uh, for the hollow conductors. Uh, so this um, being modular allows us to account for um, multiple coils within the machine uh, and end winding sections, um, the active section, uh, terminations, that kind of thing. It takes into account the resistivity of the copper as a function of temperature so as the temperature of the copper goes up, um, obviously the resistivity changes and the model can account for that. Uh, and also the accounts for the fact that the fluid, as the temperature of the coolant changes, so will the density, viscosity, specific heat and thermal conductivity of that fluid. And the model um, also take that in, into account. Uh, to complement that, um, we've also developed an analytical and C some analytical and CFD models of the pressure loss in the conductor, so we can look at the effects of fluid velocity and as a function of and, and the associated pressure loss across the the length of the coil and also get an understanding of the 
exit and entrance effect of the fluid going into the, the coil and um, and the pressure loss associated with that and whereas in a, in a traditional stranded coil AC losses can be managed through finer strands um, even down to something like Litz YSA with the hollow conductor section we have to be mindful that um, AC losses may have a significant impact um, and by AC losses this is the effect of current tending to favour the outside edge of the conductor with increased frequency um, which increases the effect of resistance of the copper and ultimately the losses associated with that so this the the AC loss model is is shows the current distribution in the conductor as a um, at the different operating points of the machine so we can establish the work so in order to to move on to the manufacturing aspect of this um, we first had to have a reasonable um, basis for a coil design um, so to, to complement the modelling framework we developed um, we looked at designing a baseline machine or demonstrator machine um, designed firstly um, with consideration for um, implementing hollow conductors in the windings so as I said before these offer direct cooled windings through the use of hollow conductors um, the use of concentrated windings with hollow conductors is slightly restricted due to the limited bend radius of the hollow conductors so you tend to find with uh, it, this requires a larger or a wider tooth um, on which to wind the the coil um, so the which tends to be um, the larger machines whereas we try looking at a a more medium sized machine so um, so we decided to look at distributed windings um, which becomes more feasible um, because we're not so constrained by the minimum bend radius of the, of the hollow conductor however the um, as it will become apparent this requires a, um, a much more complex forming of the end winding arrangement uh, furthermore, the hollow conductors are commercially available in dis discrete dimensions, so the slot depth and the width is largely dictated by the increments of hollow conductor sample available, um, and you find the machine design becomes a function of the state of bore radius and the number of turns. So we've managed to procure um, three 10 meter samples of hollow conductor from a company called Lovata. Uh, these were the samples were a four by four conductor with a two millimeter circular duct so these are uninsulated we can insulate it with uh, an insulation of our choice a four by four conductor with a 2.5 millimeter circular duct with a polyimide overlap tape insulation as shown in the picture below that and a 3 by 2.3 millimeter conductor with a 1.3 millimeter circular duct uh, and this has a continuous insulation in peak material which is an engineering plastic and it's probably just worth noting all the conductors samples are copper so the baseline demonstrator machine cross section looks like this these are the active components shown here it is the coils are double layer so one slot is shared by two coils uh, the insulation is is standard um, polyamide insulation the slot liner is 
um, 0.5 millimeters thick. Um, and it's probably worth saying the non-active components for this machine are being considered in the Grand Challenge 1.3 work uh, theme. So the key parameters of this baseline demonstrator machine are that the stator OD is 200 millimeters, the axial length of the active section is 90 millimeters, it has a 10,000 RPM base speed, um, there is a 12,000 RPM overspeed capability in terms of the rotor containment, so the rotor containment is designed up to 12,000 RPM. Um, it has an estimated active machine mass of 17 kilograms dry weight uh, and with a current density in the windings of 20 amps per 25 amps per millimeter squared this gives us a torque of 285 newton meters which corresponds to about 17.5 kilowatts per kilogram of active mass if we could drive the current density up to 30 amps per millimeter squared this would give us a torque of 380 newton meters for peak torque and a active mass of 23.4 kilowatts per kilogram uh, it's a distributed winding machine integer slot so there's eight 4x4 four four conductors in a slot uh, over two coils and a coil span of three slots So the winding geometry of the demonstrator machine would look something like like this. This is a, a CAD model. Um, the manufacturer suggests a minimum bend radius of approximately three times the outer diameter of the hollow conductor. So in this case, this is a 4x4 conductor, so a 12mm bend radius as a minimum. The so in order to stay within the constraints of that minimum bend radius and allow the end winding sections of the coil of each coil to pass each other uh, so there's no collisions with, as the, when the machine is, or set of coils is assembled uh, we end up with quite a complex geometry that looks like this so the, the image on the left would be the full machine with all three phases the image in the middle is just one phase, there's 10 coils per phase uh, and the image on the right is the effectively the repeating unit of one coil and there is 10 of those which make up a phase. This is to, to show some of the results of the thermal modelling for a particular for the demonstrator machine so there are 10 coils in series so that's both series fluid and electrical connections uh, the coil length per phase is 19.3 meters and this is for operating at a current density of 25 amps per millimeter squared so there's two coolants considered up to this point which was Mydel 7131 and Fralgotherm x80 and these are the results for those coolants at 20 degrees C. Uh, the plot on the left being the Mydel shows it has slightly better heat removal from the coil than the Fraugotherm. And we need a flow rate of 0.625 for the Mydel or greater and 0.75 litres per minute for the Fraugotherm in order to maintain the coil temperature or average copper temperature uh, below 200 degrees C. So this plot represents the associated premium of reducing the average conductor temperature with respect to copper loss within the coil uh, the plot shows the percentage of DC copper loss with respect to output power as a function of 
conductor average temperature. So the yellow dotted line represents the current density of 25 amps per millimeter squared, which is the operating point for which the thermal models on the previous slide represent. And we can see there's a definite premium to reducing the conductor temperature as already at 200 degrees we're into the 1.5 to 1.75 percent of copper loss alone. Um, it's anticipated the other losses, combined losses in the machine may represent at least 1 percent so we'd be looking at a machine efficiency maximum of, of 97 percent um, at best uh, in this, with this scenario. So this slide represents the pressure loss and fluid temperature rise across one phase of the machine. This is for our 4x4 conductor with a 2mm circular duct. So our thermal models predict we a required flow rate of 0.75 litres per minute in order to maintain the conductor temperature below 200 degrees. The current density in the winding at this point was 25 amps per millimetre squared and the fluid inlet temperature is controlled to be 20 degrees C. So we can see the difference in pressure loss uh, for the two coolant materials, Mydel and Fraugotherm, is quite marked. Fraugotherm develops a pressure loss across the 19.3 mil meter length of conductor which forms the phase, 10 coils of the phase, uh, represents a pressure loss of just over 50 bar, whereas the Mydel is, is approaching 450 bar uh, for the same flow rate and the same inlet temperature. Um, further studies we've now um, done is to include the viscosity uh, of the material as a function of temperature as well as the thermal properties um, and the resistivity of the copper um, and this gives a more representative picture and we tend to find that the viscosity of the Mydel doesn't create quite such a, a problem in pressure loss terms. Um, and it becomes comparable to that of the Fraugotherm if we are mindful of the temperature that we operate the fluid at. So the plot on the right represents the fluid temperature rise um, across the phase. The fluid spends approximately five seconds within the conductor and the, during that period the fluid rise is approximately 7 um, degrees C which indicates that the heat removal from the copper is dominated by the velocity of the fluid not necessarily the mass flow rate of that fluid. So in order to understand how the fluid entry effects add to the pressure loss across the phase, we developed some computational fluid dynamic models of our hollow conductor. So in this case it's a 200 millimeter circular duct and this has been modeled um, as a 200 millimeter conductor length in this case. Uh, to reduce the computational um, requirements which and is an adequate length to enable the fluid entry to stabilize and uh, become laminar. So the table below shows the predicted pressure loss of both the analytical and the CFD analysis 
for flow rates of 0 0.3, 1.2, 3 and 8 litres per minute. So we can see and as the flow rate increases the fluid effects become more pronounced uh, and the, we can see that the difference between the predicted the pressure loss prediction from the analytical model um, which has the shortfall that doesn't include the fluid entry effects and assumes laminar flow from the outset and um, we can see that the uh, entry effects become an issue um, looking at the difference between the analytical for standard flow and the CFD model which includes the um, fluid entry effects. So we developed a series of CFD models. Um, I won't go into too much detail here. If anyone wants any further information, please do contact me. Um, so this is showing the pressure loss um, by introducing a bend um, for the Midel 7131 coolant at 20 degrees C. Um, for a, this is for a point li point 0.3 litres per minute flow rate, um, length of 200 millimetre, a bend radius of 12 millimetres, which is the minimum bend radius suggested by the manufacturer. Uh, and this gives a pressure loss of approximately 1.925 bar um, and the equivalent straight section would give a pressure loss of 1.9 bar so the this indicates the loss of introducing the bend to be 0.25 bar which is fairly neg negligible in this case so this slide represents the CFD based pressure loss models um, for a six millimeter bend in the in the length of conductor. So the length of the duct or the conductor is 200 millimeters in this case. The plot on the left represents a 0.3 liters per minute flow rate uh, and this gives a predicted pressure loss of 1.927 bar. The equivalent straight length of conductor is predicted to give a loss of 1.9 bar so again at this flow rate the loss due to the bend is, is uh, fairly negligible. The plot on the right shows a 1.2 litre per minute flow rate and we can see that the predicted pressure loss uh, of this straight section is 7.82 bar which rises to 8.296 bar by introducing the 180 degree bend um, at a bend radius of six millimeters in, into the conductor length which shows this uh, effect the effect of the bend um, the pressure loss in due to the bend becoming more uh, pronounced So we made some estimates previously of the predicted pressure loss across the length of conductor but it's not clear from the manufacturer how much pressure the conductor can withstand. So we also developed some stress models of the conductor cross section for different pressures within the conductor. So this was done by simply increasing the flow rate which results in a pressure across the conductor and then looking at the peak stress within the, the length of conductor. So these particular results are for MyDel7131 at 20 degrees C. Uh, the yield strength of annealed copper is taken to be 33.3 megapascal and the plot on the left is for 8 litres per minute in order to produce a 60 bar pressure across the, the length of conductor shows the peak stress in that 
for a perfectly circular duct is 14.38 megapascal which is clearly below the yield strength of the of the copper um, whereas the plot on the right is is at the yield strength of the copper uh, and this is for a pressure loss or a pressure across the the length of conductor of 145 bar which results from a, a flow rate of 16 liters per minute so that's clearly unsustainable um, quite what safety factor we would need to introduce to make sure the the stress was below the the well below the the yield strength of the copper um is is unclear at the moment but uh, that that's sort of ongoing work so in order to validate the modeling framework that we've established so far we have designed and had manufactured a test rig for measure to doing some laboratory measurements of uh, pressure loss across the length of conductor and looking at the temperature of the copper for a given flow rate so the conductors this is to deal with um, both the 4x4 and the 3x3.2mm conductor samples that we have. They sit in this conductor support structure um, which is just under a metre long. The idea being that the samples we're going to measure are one metre which is enough to give a big enough pressure loss to, to be able to measure sensibly. And in order to um, couple our fluid and electrical connection to the conductor we've designed these um, custom brass fittings on each end which take both the fluid connection the electrical connection and the pressure measurement um, all in the same unit and the idea is that will be either soldered or brazed onto the end of the conductor um, to, to form the connection or to, or to form the, the fluid and the electrical connection um, and the idea of this long section is to keep the conductor as straight as possible so the the, the fluid flow should be um, comparable to our models And then on the underside of the support structure, I've introduced um, some channels for us to manually form the conductor into a both a 12 millimeter bend radius and a six millimeter nominal bend radius uh, to validate the models with the um, including the bend. So this slide shows the CAD drawings of the fluid and electrical terminations in order to interface with the hollow conductors. Uh, the problem being the duct in the middle is very small for standard fittings so we've had to design a custom fitting um, in order to channel our fluid into the duct and connect our current source to the conductor and provide a means of measuring the the pressure at that point so these are um, brass terminals that will either be brazed or soldered onto the hollow conductor samples convert to and will allow us to convert to standard fluid connections uh, there's an integrated port for the pressure transducer and we plan to use standard vehicle battery terminal clamps to connect the current source to the brass terminal and ultimately to the, the hollow conductor. So 
So the slides so far have detailed the modelling framework we've developed so far for assessing the thermal performance of the hollow conductor as well or as well as the pressure loss per unit length and the AC loss in the cross section of the conductor as well as the position of the conductor within the slot of the machine. We've also detailed um, an experimental stage for validating these models through some temperature measurements of the conductor as a function of fluid flow rate and inlet temperature as well as and as well as measuring the pressure loss across a length of conductor of uh, a meter length. Um, the experimental rig has been manufactured and we're just waiting for um, effectively access to the labs to be able to conduct that experimental stage. So the next steps in terms of manufacturing is to look at how we may form a coil from a hollow conductor. Um, in particular, how we may form the bends required to form that coil um, for the machine. So we've done, or in the initial stages, we're investigating the stress across the hollow conductor as a result of bending. So this is the resulting stress and strain on the duct and required filler material. Uh, we predict that we will need a filler material in order to maintain the integrity of the duct through, through the bending process. So the idea of the modelling was to try and get an idea of the modulus required for of the filler material in order to maintain the duct in integrity. Um, we're also plan to look at the effect on the insulation through bending, perhaps through stress modelling of the insulation, and any effect on resistivity uh, in the copper. Um, some possible filler materials for tube bending support through suggestions we've had are seroy, sero alloys, sorry, tube bending fillers, uh, sand or sand and paraffin wax, some form of incompressible fluid or a metal rod that's inserted and then removed when the bend is formed, as with the the, the other filler materials. Um, the plan is to conduct the experimental stage as soon as we can, when it's feasible to return to the university labs, um, and also to do some preliminary bending of the conductors and to look at w without support and to look at how that affects the duct. Um, post bending. I've tried to give you a flavour of the activities so far in GC 2.2. Um, manufacture of high performance coils with ultimate control. But in order to constrain the length of this presentation, I have left out some of the finer detail, including a concentrated coil design uh, we're taking forward for some initial ideas on manufacture. So if you'd like any further information um, or clarification on any points covered in this presentation or outside, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me. My email address is there. Thank you for listening.